Hey friends and family, welcome to Wayne Carey Global Channel. I am Pastor Wayne Slinger Carey. This is a place where giants are slayed. And those of you watching us for the first time, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel, uh, ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified on a daily basis when we bring forth um, uh, content that would equip you. And again, we equip you to help those uh, that you lead. In our last uh, session uh, we had, we spoke about nine of the most common uh, automatic listening styles that you and your partner are likely to possess. Uh, we had uh, one of uh, a person responded on the on on our page and mentioned about how that you know she listened, but she actually listened to defend. And so I comment back and I said, you know, it's good that when you you know you realize that you you listen, and when you listen, you listen actually to defend. And now that you've grown from that, and so use that to be able to help someone else. And so that was pretty, that was pretty good. And so our last lesson was that talked about the nine most common, um, automatic listening styles that you and your partner are likely to possess. And so today uh, we want to share with you today, uh, talking about communicating clearly with love and respect, communicating clearly with love and respect. We want to give you seven concrete steps, um, that a partner can take to actually to communicate clearly with love and respect seven concrete steps that we want to give you. And so today we're going to begin with the first step and it has to do with modeling the behavior that you wish your partner to, to emulate. You want to model the behavior that you wish your partner to emulate. And so do not fall into the trap of somewhat, you know, we justify our bad communication or behavior because of our partners. And this sort of tick for tack is basically what it is. It is a, a killer. Is a relationship killer with uh, neither partner taking responsibility for their actions. So you want to go tick for tack, just take responsibility and you model the behavior that you wish that your partner would emulate. And number two, uh, when you uh, forget to, in a sense, you forget to communicate in a manner that reflects your respect and love um, for your partner. And so again, it basically, this is where it, it begins. The foundation of it is really with love and respect. And when you find yourself, you are communicating or you find yourself communicating and you did not communicate with love and respect, what you want to do, you want to catch yourself in that moment when you have not responding the way that you know you should respond. Um, you want to catch yourself in that moment and offer a sincere apology um, you know, you can basically, you know, you want to offer a sincere apology and then you commit to doing better in the future. And so we got to go to number three. Number three, do not attempt to justify your bad behavior. You don't want to attempt. Don't attempt to justify your bad behavior for any reason. Uh, everyone has bad days, you know, but they do not, you know, does not excuse you um, and such lapses. And so what you want to do, we understand, yes, we have bad days. And um, but again, don't make excuses um, for such lapses. What you want to do again, back to responsibility, responsive, take responsibility for all your actions. And that simply means that you are the source of everything that you do. You are the source of everything that you do in all situations that you basically that you provoke. And so you want to realize this and commit to not repeating, uh, you know, the past trespasses. And so that's what you want to do. Number four, uh, if you uh, sense any energy, any any negative energy of uh, resentment uh, building in your partner, um, here's what you can do. Uh, do not step over it. Do not kind of just look over it and don't don't care about it. What you want to do, you want to create a sincere opening uh, for your partner to share what their concerns is with you. You want to do it. And when you do so, uh, do not argue, uh, do not interrupt, or do not um, invalidate them. Here's what you want to do. Let them say what's on their heart. Give them that opportunity to say uh, before uh, you give, you offer any constructive response. Just You just let them, because again, they have the resentment. They, um, you know, you're the one that invited them to it to to express themselves and so when they are expressing themselves don't interrupt allow them to do so and that that is going to help in some form or some shape I, I promise you this and number five uh, you want to look at um, remember your goal and basically the goal again is for you to respond you want to respond with um, again 
with love and respect. And so remember your goal uh, during any such communication is not to be right and win. And, and, and believe it or not, that happens so much times. We want to be right. We, you know what I'm saying? We want to win, uh, so to speak. And it's, it's really a small thing. Okay, so let's, let's just look at the bigger picture. And so you want to remember what the goal is. The goal is not um, doing any communication. It is not to be right or to win the argument. Um, it is to listen attentively. This is what you want to do. You want to listen attentively to your partner. And you want to look uh, for a way to diffuse a potentially destructive situation. This is what you want to do, and that that's that's the healthier person mentally. That you know the person that 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 is thinking the right thoughts. These are the persons in that relationship. So what you are saying, remember what it's about. Remember what the communication is about. Okay, it is not about winning the argument. It is to listen attentively, not winning the argument. Listen attentively. And you want to look away, basically, to diffuse a potentially destructive situation. So you have a choice. You can be right, or what you can do, you can be happy and have your relationship work. But you can't be both, okay? So choose wisely. And so this is what it is. You can't have both. Uh, let's not think about just being right all the time, being right, being right. Let's just look at how is it. Now, you know, it's not for us to win, but it's for us to give our full attention and listen attentively to our partners, okay? And to the views, uh, a destructive situation or what can develop into a destructive situation. Uh, number number six, you want practice being a good listener. Again, this is what it's all about, but it's practice being a good listener. Uh, if you find yourself speaking more than you're listening or you're speaking more than you listen, um, this should present a big red flag to you and presenting that big red flag um, that it, it you know it that red flag should say to you that your communication is in a, is is ineffective when you are speaking more than you are listening okay say do not attempt to raise your voice uh, play the victim role or try to get one up on your partner in any way listen with sincere intentions to have your partner be heard honored and respect it. This is what you want to do. Number seven, uh, periodically, this is the good part here. Periodically is what you want to do. All of it is good, but this is, is, is one, one of the, um, one of the, uh, the, you know, the concrete lessons that we want to look at points. Periodically check in with your partner to ask how you are doing. Uh, that's, that's very important. You always want to find out how how you're significant other, how you're doing, whether you're present with them or you're somewhere else, but you can call, find out how you're doing. Maybe you can have a a conversation the night before. Um, there was some uh, misinformation, miscommunication happened. Um, you know, they are offended in a way you go to work and then while you're at work, you call home and you, you know, you want to find out how are you doing today, baby? What's going on? And you know, they begin to say to you about the conversation the night before. And that, you know, that communication can begin right there over the phone. And you said, baby, you know, I would, you know, we'll finish discuss when I get at home or when we see each other in person, whether you're married, whether you, uh, you're dating, whatever it may be. But it's very, very important for you to check in with your partner and ask, how are you doing? Simple, but it's very profound. And you ask the question. Does your partner feel heard? Very important. Ask your partner. Or you're asking yourself. Or you're thinking about it. You, uh, basically, you can't ask your partner this also too. But does your partner feel heard and respected? And you're talking, baby, you know. Do you feel heard and respected? Do I, you know, you think, do I, um, I listen to you when you're speaking to me? Do I give you my full attention? And these are the things that you want to do. Ask your partner. Do you feel heard and respect it? Do they feel love and appreciate it or manipulated, dishonored and controlled? And when you ask those questions, you have to be ready uh, for what they're going to say. And because you ask it, you should be ready for it. OK, and so you want to accept feedback with gratitude for your development. 
and without argument. This is what you want to do. You are asking the question and you are quiet and you are listening to what they're saying. Very important question to have the conversation be heard to know exactly where the mind of your partner is, you know, because they can be present physically and their their mind is somewhere else, maybe just thinking about, um, you know, the conversation, something was said that was uh, disrespectful and it needs to be addressed. And so when you ask the question, it's inviting them to speak their mind. And so you want to listen, you want to accept feedback with gratitude as your development and without argument and uh, the feedback is given for your benefit and the benefit of your relationship you know whether you agree or not and this is what it is and so we're going to look at over the seven points uh seven the concrete steps seven concrete steps that a partner can take to communicate clearly with with love and respect i love to repeat love to go over it again number one you want to model the behavior that you wish or that your partner to emulate uh, number two, uh, when you forget to communicate in a manner that reflects, uh, you reflects your respect and love for your partner. You don't want to catch yourself. Basically, you find yourself being disrespectful in a way you want to be able to catch yourself and just apologize right away. And you go from there. Number three, uh, you do not attempt to justify your bad behavior. Make it short. Number four, if you uh, sense an energy of resentment building you want to in your partner do not step over it you don't want to step over it you want to ask uh deal with the manner and when you deal with the manner, it's definitely going to help it's going to see you know since you begin to see clearly exactly what's going on what direction you can go in uh that's very important number five uh remember what the goal is and the goal in in communication is not to be right and to win the argument but it's really to listen attentively and look for a way that you can diffuse a potential destructive situation. Number six, you want to practice being a good listener. Um, you, uh, you want to practice being a good listener. The way that you do that is by listening, not basically talking. So if you find yourself talking a lot more than you're listening, then that's that's it right there. Number seven, periodically, periodically you want to check in with your partner, um, you know, to see how they're doing, how did they, how is that going? And again, you want to accept. Uh, feedback and uh, this is what's really going to help you the feedback is for you not really to say anything you you, you know you want to hear what they say whether you disagree with it or not seven concrete steps okay that's going to be able to to help you uh communicate uh clearly with love and also with respect and again i want to thank you for listening uh, those of you who have a comment, just comment in the box. Uh, let us know what you think about it, some things that we can talk about. And uh, we are grateful again uh, for you. Like it, share it, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And so on behalf of my wife, uh, Janice, uh, we are grateful uh, that you would tune in and listen to our channel. We want to encourage you, uh, those of you who have uh, been listening, uh, we have waynecarryglobal.com. You can go over there, check out the website. Uh, there are some resources you're interested in it in terms of really for being equipped uh, to help young people uh, on that site. And then also that'll take you over to pay hip. I'm also an author of a book, uh, The Emotional Pain That Bullying Causes. Uh, you can go over at Amazon.com uh, and you can purchase a copy of my book uh, there. OK, The Emotional Pain That Bullying Causes. Wayne Carey Global. Uh, is payhip.com, Amazon. You can check our resources out there. And again, we always encourage you, those of you who you want something else in your life. You know, you, you, you're empty. You're just going through the motion. You need to find your purpose. You don't know what your purpose are. And that's when you come to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. We always encourage you to develop, have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the foundation of purpose. He's the one that created you in his likeness and in his image. And it is to have dominion and authority in the earth to walk in purpose. So if you don't have a relationship with him, you're not going to know your purpose. OK, the purpose is actually going to give you definition in your life. And so on behalf of my beautiful wife, again, we want to thank you. And we want you to say you have a great day. We will see you in our next session. God bless you and be continue to be blessed. Amen.